All right. So what the Rebbe used is 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 using the name of his brother, his brother who passed away. In which year? I forgot what year it was. Not in the, I think in the fifties. His brother passed away. <clears throat> his brother passed away in England, and the Rebbe had his body brought to 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 Tzfat, in his buried in Tzfat, Yisrael Ariyaleiv. So the Rebbe. Interestingly enough, the Rebbe kept it hidden from his mother that his brother had passed away because his mother was, she had suffered so much in Russia. The Rebbe's father passed away and much, much of her life she had, she, uh, she, of course, she was alone. And the Rebbe brought her from Russia to the USA. And she was there for like 18 years, something like that, 17 years she was there with the Rebbe, and uh, the Rebbe wanted to, he used to visit her every day, and and the Rebbe used to, didn't want, wanted to keep from her any bad news, so the Rebbe would actually write postcards, and he could, he duplicated his brother's handwriting, and he sent the postcards to France, or to England, wherever it was, and there was somebody over there that would send the letters, these postcards, to his mother. So his mother would not know that her, her son passed away. I mean, the fact is, I don't think that she didn't know. You know, she she also had a bit of, you know, Ruach HaKodesh. But however it was, he, that's what he did. So so the Rebbe, of course, was close. It was his brother. So now the Rebbe is explaining that everything that happens in the world has a message to it. And especially a Jew, and especially a Jew's name. So, <clears throat> first of all, we have the name. His name was Yisrael Aryeh Leib. Yisrael Aryeh Leib. And we said that the idea of Yisrael <clears throat> was 600,000 letters to the Torah. And the whole idea of the Torah is to change the world, to make the world because God put the Torah in the world <clears throat> to fix up the world. And that's the whole idea of, um, of making the world a holy place. Like it says, you have to look at three things and you won't come to do a sin, not just yourself and God, but also the world. That's the third thing, yourself and God in the world. <clears throat> and that's what it means to make a dwelling for God. By means of serving God, the bureau and refining and clarifying the world. That means working in the world. That's what we just learned about, right? The first three years of Orla, by means of working in the world, you become <clears throat> the Tochal. Yisrael, it says, is, was Yaakov, right? Jacob. But his name was changed to Yisrael after he fought with the angel of Esau. So it says... <clears throat> Because you fought with man and with gods, that's the angel of Esau, and you were victorious. Milashen Yecholat means you have the ability. That by means of dealing with the world properly, according to the Torah, you are added more and more abilities. And uh, how do you say power? Your potential comes to be revealed to do good, like it says in many places. That by means of a Jew <clears throat> listening to and activating his godly soul, so that that should be dominant in his day to day life, to do what God wants and to refrain from what God forbids. Is kafisha he be belavushes like it, as it is in this physical body and in the natural, what's called the animal soul, your natural desires and personality. But you do your work in the world, mitvosefes bokoach that you get a reward, and the reward is that you have more power, more inspiration, more ability, new abilities you didn't even know you had. Yucholet chadasha. Mitzadzeh, because of Rav Tvuot B'Koach Shor, because there's much power in the, in the there was there was much benefit in the power of an ox. 
I don't know if you've ever seen an ox before. I mean, people live in, you know, USA, you never saw an ox. But I went to, where was it, Nepal. <clears throat> anyway, I was there for a while. And there's these people have these big oxes and with these big horns and everything. And they that's their motor to their car. They have carts. And they pull the carts. That's what everybody does. You know, it's, it's a very, <clears throat> uh, how do you say, um, not mechanical place <laughs> so these big oxes now an ox is just i mean they're walking down the street people walk right next to them they have these big horns they don't at least i didn't notice they don't take any make any effort to you know cover the horns up or something like that big horns <clears throat> and people walk down the streets like absolutely nothing like like we cross the street or you know walk in the <clears throat> absolutely nothing the oxes are huge Ox is a huge, I mean, the ox must be five times as big as a person. I don't know so much, at least. If the ox would move one with his head or something like that, who knows what? I mean, there's tremendous power with an ox. Who would ever dream that an ox could pull a cart and could be beneficial to man, could do things that man can never do? Plow fields with an ox. And the, right? If you have a tractor, so you can turn it on, you turn it off, you know, you control it. But an ox, who's going to control an ox? So people can control axes, right? In fact, axes enjoy it. They enjoy being controlled. And by being, it means <clears throat> if you want to these, you know, be kind to the animals, people, what do they call peta or something like that? You kind of will release all the axes. So if you release all the axes, then there won't be too many axes left in the world because they get run over. I, took, I remember <laughs> there was a bunch of these people. I uh, said, Anyway, there was a bunch of them people that came to, to Crown Heights when they were doing the uh, Kaporis, you know, with the chickens. And they were screaming and yelling, you know, mercy on the chickens and you people are evil and you're Nazis, you're killing the chickens. And this. So some people yelled back at them and some people, so I said, I don't understand, why, why are you coming here? I mean, there's all these, you know, these slaughterhouses all over America that they kill. I mean, we're killing, let's say, you know, 2,000 chickens. There's places that they killed hundreds of thousands of chickens every day. Why, why are you going away over here? No, you have to rid of the chickens and the chickens. So I, I, got, I got them to stop screaming for a second. I said, listen, if let's say we listen to you, right? And we don't kill any more chickens. Let's say nobody kills any more chickens, right? So it means that nobody's going to grow chickens. And have you ever seen chickens running around in the streets of, you know, New York or something like that? Won't, so it means that there'll be billions less chickens in the world. <clears throat> I mean, are you sure the chickens wouldn't rather live for, you know, a few weeks or months or whatever it is and be slaughtered and eaten by people that they would rather not be born at all? Are you sure? I mean, did you ask the chickens? Are you sure? If you, nobody eats meat, it means that no one is going to grow animals means that there'll be billions of less cows in the world, billions of sheep in the world, and that, and that you don't care about. So they didn't have anything to say. <laughs> they didn't have to say anything about that. Yeah, but you shouldn't kill them. I said, okay, you know, I, I get it. You know, you, you want to, you're here to have a good time. You want to yell and scream. So I'm sorry I interrupted you. Continue screaming and yelling. It, it sort of took the win out of, out of what they had to say. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is that we're all big animals. And God wants us to be big animals. And he wants us to tame the animals. He wants us to use the animals for what God wants. And that's why God creates the animals. So that we will tame the animals. Name what are the animals? Me and you. I mean, I'm not trying to call you animals. But, you know, <clears throat> the fact is we're all animals. right? But we have what's called a godly soul. Jews. And non-Jews also have a conscience. They have a, a, the intellect. They have... And the non-Jews have the Jews. The Jews are, the, are, are the, the godly soul for the world. So by means of this, it not only just justifies everybody's existence, but suddenly new abilities come out. And that's hinted at by the word Yisrael. Yisrael. But often in such a way that the service of Yisrael is by means of the next two names of the Rebbe's brother, Aryeh Leib. Now, Aryeh means a lion. And lev means a lion. But the word in lev is Yiddish. Lev is a Yiddish for Aryeh. But as uh, that's, <clears throat> then it's like it says, God is like Gibor Aryeh. That the, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm, I, I get back. 
It says in Perk Yavut, you should be gibor, you should be strong like a lion. It says other places that God roars like a lion, but that's not the sentence. It says you should be strong like a lion. It's Perk Yavut. You should be strong like a lion to do the will of your Father in heaven. Now, a lion is not a kosher animal. We Jews should not be learning from lions. Right? If you want to say be strong like an ox, oh, that's better. But that's not what it says in Perki Avot. It says be strong like a lion. Like it says right in the beginning of the Shulchan Aruch. Also, if you look in the Shulchan Aruch, the book of Jewish law, <clears throat> whom it kaber, I'll call you should, oh, you should strengthen yourself on all of the concealment and all of the difficulties in the world. Overpower them. Like Yaakov overpowered the angel. But no about these Gabros Elu, <clears throat> in addition to the fact that you defy the world and rather you turn yourself to holy things, that's like an arye, unless in a Kurdish, that's an arye, that's a lion in Hebrew. There's also by him, he's gabrus, also ba'avod ha'binyani reshut b'chol. Not only do you strengthen yourself to do what God wants in the world, but you also strengthen yourself to make even the mundane world holy. That's the Yiddish translation of the word Arya. The word Arya is from Lashon HaKodesh, holy language. Lev is not a holy language. It's Yiddish. It's regular mundane speech. <clears throat> so that's what it means, Yisrael, by means of utilizing the Torah properly and doing it to serve God, then you have the power to make to transform Arya, which that's the holy things in the world, the good things, Torah, Mitzvahs, and to be strengthened in those things, like a lion. And not only that, but also in labor, even the mundane things in the world. The money you have, the job that you work at, the, the, the people that you, your acquaintances, right? The clothes that you wear, the food that you eat. Everything can be used to serve God. Well, the Hosef and Tehran, that Leib is also the letters of Lamed Beit with a Yud. Heart, Lamed Beit with a Yud in the middle. Shemar is the sense at the heart of man, lave, and the yud in the middle are the ten powers of the soul. And in more detail, kotvim lipamim, we can write sometimes in Yiddish, they write lave, lamed, yud, yud, beit. In Yiddish, if you write Yiddish, it's used Hebrew letters, but there's no vowels, and the letters become vowels. So a yud, one yud is an e sound, and two yuds is an a sound. So it's lib is really yud, <clears throat> but sometimes it's written aria lab with two yuds. <clears throat> this is talking about if so, we said the yud is talking about the soul. Two yuds are talking about two levels of the soul. One is Yaakov and Yisrael, same person. Yaakov and Yisrael is the same person, and throughout the Torah. The names are interchangeable. Sometimes it's called Yaakov and sometimes it's called Yisrael, which is not the case of Abraham. Abraham, after his name was changed from Avram, is never called Avram again. He's called Avraham always. But Yaakov, his name was changed to Yisrael, and they are the names are interchangeable. Sometimes Yaakov is called Yaakov and sometimes Yisrael. Came and since Shabbat the service of Yisrael, this holy service, namely to make the world, a dwelling for God, for God, this is done by the ten powers of your soul as they are in the heart of man. And the heart of Yisrael is always complete. Like it says, Ani Yeshana, believe ye air. I am sleeping, but my heart is always awake. So in other words, the ten external parts, aspects of the soul, they cover over the Ten internal aspects of the soul, the Yisrael of the soul, the godly soul. And sometimes you don't feel it in a revealed way, but it's always there in, in a concealed way. A hint at your Judaism is always there reminding you. That's what we said before, the sound of my beloved is, is knocking. Well, we can even say more that the heart, hamakif at the ha yud, this heart that covers over the yud, the natural soul, and which which covers over the godly soul, who gimel. This is the three garments of thought, speech, and action, and they cover over the ten aspects of the soul. 
המבטים אותם בעבודת האדם בפה למטה ונותן אספקט של הסול ואקטיבט תחת, ספיץ' ואקשן להיות גרמנט for the holy soul. Yes, that's the all hinted at it, Arie Leib. We can also attach this to what it says in, the, in Yud Gimel Iyar. Yud Gimel Iyar, that's the date that the, pre, that the Rebbe's brother passed away. 13th day of Iyar. Now we're on the first day of Iyar, Rosh Chodesh. When the Rebbe gave the speech, so that the calendar was not in sync with the calendar that we have. Now, okay. It says, Yud Gimel is the numerical value of Echad. He passed away on, so like, what are we saying? Everything that there is in the world is a message to us about how to serve God. Everything. So sometimes you can even make things up. You can make things up in your own mind. If it helps in the service of God, doing commandments, being a better person. So you can make up ideas if you want to. And of course, if the Rebbe makes up ideas, it's not just made up, I and mean, it's a different, whole different level of making up ideas. <clears throat> so here we can see, here's a good example. The 13th of the month, number 13 in general, this is the numerical value of Echad, one. God is one. How do we get that? Aleph is one. Chet is eight. Dalid is four. So what is it? One and eight is nine. Plus four is 13. That's so 13 of the day, that's the numerical value of the word echad. Shemar Omez, this hints at <coughs> serving God in a way <coughs> that God should be a king on the whole entire world. And on that day, it says God will be one and his name will be one. What does it mean, God will be one? God's not one right now. It says God will be one because his name will be one. What's God's name? God's name is the world. God creates the world through his name. That's what we just finished learning in the Kuti Torah. Remember the first three years, that's the, the lower aspect of God's speech. And the, 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 the Tiferet, that's the higher aspect, the Torah. It says, we want, how will God be one? When we show that the whole entire world is God's creation, one, and for, to reveal his oneness. <clears throat> the Gilui of Malchuto, the revelation of God's kingship and his unity in the world until the way that the kingship, Malchut Shabbat that's the Rebbe's <coughs> brothers, the, the, the sphere and sphere at the Omer. The... Okay, so what's the Rebbe want to do over here? What's the Rebbe trying to do? Just like we learned in the Kuti Torah, not to take the world or ourselves at face value. We have no idea what good is being hidden in the world, what good is hidden inside of our souls. We have no idea what it means to be a good, true world. We don't know what it means. <clears throat> but the Rebbe is trying to tell us that there is such a thing. God promises it. And there is waiting for us a world where there won't be any bad. But that's all we can relate to, that there won't be any sickness and there won't be any boredom and there won't be any of this. What is going to cause this? We don't know. It, it's, it's a type of a good that we have no idea what it means. It's something like the difference between being sick and being healthy. The difference between being unconscious and being conscious. Uh, being, being in prison and getting out of prison. Something like that. When a person is in prison or a person is sick, or whatever, and his family is all around his bedside or they have his picture on the wall. You know, where is Uncle Joe? You know, we, we miss him so much. And all of a sudden he walks in the door. There he is. Oh, a new thing. Okay, but it's not really new because there was people before. He's just being revealed. From what, what we knew before was hidden and now it becomes revealed. What's going to be revealed, the good that's going to be revealed is a good we've never experienced before. It's a type of good that's never experienced. Infinitely more surprising than the good that's in heaven, which is also incomprehensible. But after a person dies, so he's dead. Right, your person, you're dead. You can't do any of the things you like to do: eat and whatever, drink and you know, friends. And, but you can't do any of the things you used to do. You're just a soul. So what are you going to do? He says, "Oh, that, that is going to be real good." He says, "Well, the good that's going to come by means of Mashiach is going to make the good of going to heaven look like <clears throat> how do you say a cartoon before the main future, main feature. 
We don't know what it is, but we're talking about reality. That's what we're talking about. The, the good that's revealed in heaven after a person dies, it's not really reality. It's spirituality. It's a thing we didn't see. But we it's, it's just a different picture than this world. The reality the Rebbe is talking about is this world. We're going to see what it really is. This world, all the spiritual worlds, are going to be like nothing compared to the reality that's going to be revealed. We have no idea what happens when we do a good deed, for instance. It's eternal. We have no idea how important this world, physical world, is to God. <coughs> Infinitely more so than the upper worlds. Just that in the upper world, you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so it says, according to this, now we can learn many, many things of the Jewish people and how to bring the future redemption. How we should prepare ourselves for the future redemption. And now, especially, says the Rebbe, we're right at the last moments of exile. Gola, like the Rebbe said, exile is the word gola. Exile. Hine, hine, bo, gola, and, and soon, Immediately, it's going to come the Aleph into it. It's going to be Ge'ula. And Aleph is going to come and just change this whole exile into Ge'ula. A new thing is going to be revealed. We'll see what reality is in this world, how precious this world is. The quote I'm called, but first of all, Yeshno Mana, here we have an answer to all those people, Shemit Palim, that they are, how do you say, uh, surprised and that they are. How do you say, uh, afraid? Mikach, that the Marishina were making so much noise, so many Jews, that we have to, what we have to do to bring the Gula immediately, immediately. <clears throat> we have to bring it instantly. Obiotam, because these are open people, so they say what they're saying, namely what? What are they saying? Chabad people, what are they saying? What are you talking so much about, Mashiach? What's this thing? You're wrecking all of Chabad. Chabad has become a normal, acceptable <clears throat> stream of Judaism. And now you're hacking everybody and driving everybody crazy, Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. You're making us, we're, we're becoming like everybody else and we're being liked by everybody else. And all of a sudden you're screaming, Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. <clears throat> Everything we've worked for for so long to be appreciated and to be accepted, it's all <clears throat> going down the drain. <clears throat> you can't talk about Mashiach, stop talking about Mashiach. Mashiach will come and be quiet. That's what people say. And people, and why are they saying it? Because they're, 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 how do you say, uh, uh, worried. Not, worry is not the word. They're intimidated huh? <clears throat> by this. They're afraid. You're, you're shaking the whole boat. Kashir Mashiach, Yavo, Mashiach will come immediately. What's going to be? And they ask, Im call Apollos, Benyanim, everything that I've done, all, all these years in exile, Asakim, all the work that we've done, harachush, my money, my things, hachaverim, what about my friends? What about all my connections? Anybody in Israel, what it's talking about, the Jews, the non-Jews, shekashu that, that we've been, that I've made, and the old chaos and more things like this, what's going to happen? Mashiach's going to come. Everything I've worked for is just going to be, right? I have a nice house. I have a reputation. I, I've got friends. I have connections. <clears throat> I got security. Security. I have security. I have all these People that I know, wherever I go, people know me. I can sit. I need something to be done. I know who to call up. I can get it done. <clears throat> Mashiach is going to come. He's going to wreck the whole thing up. Everybody's going to be equal. Everybody's going to be the same. <clears throat> What's going to happen? The answer to this is, don't be scared. Ain't malafahed. Don't be scared. Kevin says the Gula in Pirusha, the idea of the future redemption. It doesn't mean that anything in the world is going to stop. All the good things that you've done in exile, exactly the opposite. They won't go away. Geula, the word geula means we're just adding something. This, it, The word geula, it contains in it all of the good things which are in exile. Okay, there won't be any more addictions. There won't be any more the depression. The word of, That'll be missing. Right? The world can get along fine, fine, fine. It won't miss it one second if there aren't any more addictions. Maybe the, the people who sell narcotics or something, maybe they'll miss it, but <clears throat> even them not. 
all the bad things will be gone, but all the good things will be will remain, but often in such a way that even more that they will be <clears throat> enhanced. The months of a geula, and they'll be in a way of redemption. We'll see the godliness and the real purpose of why these things are. Why there's such a thing as friends? Why there are such things as acquaintances? Why there are such a things as money, as success? And these things are good. These are good. But everything will be revealed in their true sense. Al they said by means of that that we reveal in them the aleph, and the, we put good into everything. Aluvo shalolam. Don't let the world get. Don't somebody cut you off when you're driving. Don't get angry. Don't let the world right. Roll down your window, say, God bless you. Have a good day. Try not to cut me off next time. But this is not an easy thing to do if you have a bad thing. has revealed the glory of God. You don't have to be worried about everything you've accomplished. Even if you've accomplished things which are not in Torah and commandments, mundane things that you've done in the time of exile. Exactly the opposite. From this, there's a clear teaching <clears throat> that every businessman or whatever, you should find ways in order to reveal in your business the glory and the goodness of Hashem. Or the, to use your business and your connections to add on Torah of a mitzvah. You have a, a client, a Jewish client, right? Ask him to put on tefillin. You have a non-Jewish client Get, the round, get around to the seven no white commandments in a pleasant way, in a nice way, right? You can do it. You're a businessman. You built up your business because you have some sort of sense, acumen. Use it in order not just to sell your things. Sell your things. Become multi-billionaire. Be successful. But also sell truth. Sell goodness. Torah. A little bit. Say a sentence of the Torah. <clears throat> And maybe you'll mess up a few times, maybe not, but you learn from experience. Um, said, from this, and there's so many cases, so many times I know myself that you can talk to somebody and you think you've totally right made a bad impression on the person. And years later, a person comes and says, Remember that conversation we had back then? Wow, you don't know what that did for me. You know, I decided I'm gonna stop beating my wife and I'm gonna stop drinking alcohol and I'm gonna stop gambling. And I didn't even know you used to do these things. Oh, don't ask. I did. And you just said one word, you know, that God is good or something. And I I left in a huff and I thought, you know, I cut off business connections with you because I thought this guy's a maniac. And suddenly I started, you don't know what that gets me. I know I have a friend, a wonderful, wonderful person, Rabbi Vechter. Oh, and he said that once somebody came up to him and said, you spoke to such and such a place. He said, me, I think he, he said, me and my friends, we were all going to the missionaries had us, we were all going to convert, God forbid, to, 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 to their religion in Israel. This is the reason. And we heard your lecture, and it changed us completely. He said, lecture, when was that? He said, remember, you were in Kfar Saba. He didn't remember. He said, I don't remember I was there. I don't remember I spoke. I don't remember. And he has a good memory. Guy said, I don't remember I was there. I don't remember I spoke. I certainly don't remember what I said. I don't remember the person's face. I have no idea who the guy is whatsoever, right? We have no idea when we do something good, the effects that it can have. When we said this will be understood, the teaching on the other way, to those people that say that the whole service of, ek, of, re, of bringing the redemption is belief shaykhahs, that we shouldn't have any connection to the world. And exactly the you should know that exactly the opposite. The future redemption depends on all of our deeds. And then we should start being a maniac and you talk about Mashiach all the time and everybody has to agree with me and everybody has to, and you scream and you don't care what everybody says. It says, okay, listen, you've got a good intentions, but you're, the methods you're using are, are, are not going to bring the redemption. That's not, I mean, we don't know what's going <clears> to, <throat> nothing's going to stop the redemption, but this is not one of the things that's going to bring it. Said the Rebbe, on one hand, you can be the most mundane thing, person in the world, put a little olive inside. On the other hand, you could be the biggest aleph in the world, your biggest religious person in the world. God, remember that four-fifths of the redemption is the world, is the exile. You have to look, and therefore, Tzorich Liyot, you have to be stuck up with You have to look at three things all the time. Service has to, what's going to bring the future redemption? It has to be the Sarita em Elohim vel Adam v'tochal. You have to deal with the world. You have to be pleasant. You have to be a nice guy. You have to be human. 
You have to help people. Be helpful. Hi, the person's not going to say afterwards, you know, about Mashiach or whatever. You, you stand up, you give your, your seat on the on the bus to an old person, right? I, that old person is a non-Jew. He's not going to, eh, listen, God made you a Jew. God made him in the same, one God, same God. Person needs something, you don't care. It's a Jewish person, a non-religious person, a non-Jewish person. Person needs something, you help them out. You say hello to people. What's wrong? You're going <clears> to, <throat> we're dealing with the world. You have the world. We're trying to make a dwelling for God in the world. Be normal. But in that normal, you have to be normal according to what the Rebbe wants, not how you want. You have to pre prepare yourself for the redemption. But often, in a way, you have to fight with gods and with people. To fight with the concealment of the world the spiritual and the physical, but in a, often, tuchal, in a way that you will succeed, that you're able, you have the ability to do it. Malchut that people will want to do what Hashem wants. And similarly, in the service in Rashut, in your mundane things you do, you will do everything, even the most mundane things in your job, whatever, you will do the shame Shemayim for the sake of God, but called the Rechecha in all of your ways, your, even your mundane things, how you put on your shoes, whatever, wake up in the morning, everything should be with the awareness of God. Do it, what the Shulchan Aruch says. <clears throat> and even more, by means of spreading out the Torah and Judaism and spreading out the ideas of Hasidut outward, including a special to arouse Jews in the whole world, that they should do more in learning Torah and doing the commandments, and also to advertise in every place in the world that there is a alufa shalolam, that there's a king of the world, including also ashpa al umot olam, including non Jews, the nogea lakim, that they should do the seven noid commandments, <clears throat> preparing them, liot lashem malucha, that God will rule the whole world. As we're going to talk about more, God willing. Tomorrow on Friday, God willing, we'll finish this tomorrow. I don't think we'll do the Likuti Torah. We'll see. We'll see. But we'll finish this tomorrow. Okay. Now we do the Yom Yom.